Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and I am so excited to be able to show you through my brand new textures collection called Opulence. These are just some of the items that you would get in the collection. You can find them all individually and in bundles on Craftstash. I'll link this down below for you. But we're going to be focusing on one or two of the items today. As you can see, there's layering stencils. There's all sorts of different stamps, but this is the one. This is the one that we're going to be focusing on today. The most beautiful flourish. I'm first of all going to stamp this just in black for you, just so you can really clearly see the detail before we get into the technique. So it is a huge stamp. You're going to need at least your A5 platform for this or stamp press, stamp positioner, um, and you want to make sure that you've got your paper held still in case you need to restamp any areas. Now there's a couple of different techniques for stamping large stamps like this that I'm going to show you uh, during this launch. You'll find that on another video coming up up very very soon but I'm going to do this the basic way. Now with any large stamp the first thing I do is make sure there's no air bubbles underneath and that's what I'm just doing here just pressing out the air bubbles from beneath pushing them out to the side kind of the same way as you would if you were <laughs> putting wallpaper up and um, just to make sure it's laying flat to the surface. Then I prep my stamp, if it's the first time I'm using it, with a pencil eraser. I just rub the flat side of this all over the surface of the stamp. You only need to do this once and only ever with a brand new stamp. With the manufacturing process, there's usually a bit of a film left on the stamp and that can resist a little bit of the ink on the first few times you use it. So I'm going to be using my Versifying Claire here and as I ink it, look at the detail that's coming through on this stamp. It's absolutely stunning. I can't believe how beautiful this is. It's, I'm just so proud to have this design in my textures range. So lots of ink on there and now to stamp that onto white cardstock for you. And although I need to really re-ink that and go over it once more where I've missed some ink on the stamp, you can see how beautiful it is. So now to our card project. I'm going to be using embossing ink this time so I'm putting an anti-static bag all over some white smooth cardstock. I'm going to be using this clear embossing ink Verc Versamark sorry, and I'm going to press this all over my stamp. Um, I've switched up stamping platforms. I can't remember why. There was probably a reason, but I have. So it's a different platform. This is a top folding one. Um, but yeah, so I'm just applying this all the way over that stamp. Now, I didn't clean this thoroughly from the black that I've just shown you. So um, when I stamp this, I'll still be able to see exactly where I'm stamping. And there we go, by having that sort of grey from the excess old stamp plus the clear embossing ink, I can now see exactly where I've stamped that I've caught all the detail. So now to get my gold embossing powder. And I've chosen to use the Ranger Princess Gold Powder. I'm sprinkling this over the entire image and then I'm going to pour the excess back into the pot. If you want to keep this a little bit cleaner and tidier, it's probably a good idea to actually put this onto a sheet of paper folded in half rather than trying to funnel it into the pot in the way I'm going to do here. I usually end up losing a little bit this way, um, but this is kind of my craft laziness here. <laughs> so as you can see, it's just stuck to that ink beautifully, a little bit of excess, but just to the side, I'm giving it a tap with my finger away from the image so that vibration through the card just gets rid of any extra spots of powder that are around and not where they should be. Look how stunning that is. So now to heat set this. I have to say, and this is a big statement, I think this is my favourite ever textures stamp. Or so far at least. I mean, look how beautiful it looks in gold. It's so stunning and of course you can use all of the image if you do big cards or you can just use a part of it if you make smaller cards. I'm actually going to be making a smaller A6 or US A2 size card today. So I'm going to be snipping this down and just using part of it. So now for the really fun part, adding ink over the embossing so it resists. These are my favourite colours. This is Distress Oxide in Peacock Feathers and then on the outside I'm going to be using Uncharted Mariner. Now with oxides you'll find that the pigment part of the ink 
kind of goes over the top of the embossing and you feel like you've lost it you think it's stuck there forever it, it will buff off uh, with inks you won't get this because they are dye based but either way you're absolutely fine to blend with either inks or oxides or other blending inks um, as long as they haven't got any solvent in them they won't stick to the embossing and it will resist beautifully so I'm just going around the center of the cards there or the center of the flourish for the most part and leaving the outsides white because the outsides I'm going to do in the Uncharted Mariner. Now before I get on to doing my edges I'm going to trim this down to a little bit smaller. I think I'll trim it down even smaller in a little while. We shall see but this way I kind of gauge where my edges are going to be so I can make sure that they are definitely the darker areas. So just with my trimmer now I could have done this before if I wanted to I just kind of forgot about it. So take that top bit off as well. When I say I do an A6 or an A2 card, it's not always accurate. It's usually about that size. And then I worry about the envelope later. I usually end up making my own envelopes just so that they fit the unusual card sizes that I've made. Now you can see on there where the fingerprints are as well because uh, that's where I've actually been touching the flourish. I'm just getting a piece of kitchen towel here to clean off my brush because I really like using these large flathead brushes when I'm doing a big area like this. And I've only got uh, four of them, so this way I can reuse for this darker blue. So going into the edges, so I've put my blending mat down underneath just to protect my work surface. I always go deeper into the corners than I do the actual straight edges uh, and it can, kind of gives it more of a vignette look. So I'm going around with the blue now and then I'm also going to go around a little bit with black soot, mostly again on the corners. So you can already see that beautiful colour starting to appear in the background. So now I just take my kitchen towel and I buff off all the ink from that gold embossing. Look how beautiful that has come up. It's stunning. I love it. I, it's like your own really opulent patterned paper. So next I'm going to take one of the set of nesting frames that comes in the Textures Opulence collection. They are all designed slightly differently with different patterns and detail on them. This is smaller than my card but pretty much to scale so I'm positioning it in the middle and the idea is that I'm going to cut this out, add a gold frame in its place but raise the centre up. So I'm going to use some low tack tape to just stick that down. I want to be careful because I don't really want the tape to peel off any of the inked background. I'm just going to have to hold my breath and not press that down too tightly uh, and I've tried to stick it more to the embossing where I can. So just popping that inside my die cutting machine and running that through and there we go. So just gently peeling that away so that's the frame that part I'm going to it's a shame to not use it but I'm going to put it aside I'm going to be using the outer and the inner part and then I'm going to take a piece of gold mirror card sorry you can see my reflection in that <laughs> probably not looking my best either but with the gold I'm actually going to be embossing this there's some beautiful stencil or embossed detail in this die and with some of the other frames as well so in my die cutting machine I'm going to lay this upright and I'm actually going to emboss first um, this just means that I don't get as much wiggling about once it's already cut and I don't risk double cutting it so I'm placing it in with a rubber mat. It's usually quite stiff with the mat because you've got that additional pressure, but it goes through and that pushes the cardstock through the die and gives it that lovely embossed finish on the mirror card. It just looks absolutely stunning, so ornate. So keeping my die uh, in place where it is, and then just, you can just sit off screen here, I'm just going to run it back through again without the rubber mat, so this time I'm cutting it. I haven't taken anything apart, it's all exactly as it went in the first time. So now that's cut through the outline as well as embossed the detail. To be honest, the detail's probably embossed a little bit too much from with, with my machine and my plates, uh, and my rubber mat is quite thick as well. Um, but as we just take that out, you'll see how gorgeous it is. So just gently peeling it because some of the embossers almost cut through there but that's perfect look at that absolutely gorgeous so that's going to sit in between the two parts that I've already cut into that background so now to cut my card base I'm using the front panel just to mark whereabouts I need to score the center line I'm using this beautiful navy blue cardstock as my base um, it's really stunning I believe it's a craft stash cardstock 
Um, but yeah, it's such a rich dark colour and I really love creating cards with coloured card bases like this. So once I've got the fold in there, I can then trim off the excess both at the side there and I can keep that aside in case I want it for anything else. And then I can also trim the height as well. And again, I just use that matte and layer or the mat that I've already cut, the beautiful pattern paper. I just lay it on, engage whereabouts we need to cut for the height. So just lift that up ever so slightly. This is kind of my cheats way. You can measure it. You can do it way more accurately if you want to, but this is how I do my card bases if I've got matte and layer already made up. So then I just need to start constructing the base of my card. So I'm going to glue this frame as such down with a wet glue so it's going to go flat onto the card base. I obviously don't need to add any inking around the edges, we've already done that. I don't need to raise it up on foam because the centre is going to be raised up. The glue I'm using is the uh, Creative Craft Products Book Binding Glue, which is just absolutely brilliant. I love it. I've just ordered some more. Um, it just sticks and holds really, really well. Paper to card, stock cards to paper, that sort of thing. Um, I have used it on acetate as well. It does hold on acetate too. So yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant adhesive. Then I'm taking the gold frame and the pattern centre panel and I'm going to adhere these together with foam. Now I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit and I'm going to use some scraps of foam. So these are pieces that I probably um, have, well I've cut out in the past, put aside because I don't want to waste them but actually um, I need to cut them up and they need to be hidden. Nobody's going to want to see <laughs> these anywhere but they will be hidden and they're still very much usable. So there goes my raised up frame. In hindsight, I probably would have actually added a second layer of foam and raised that up even more to give it even more depth. I felt the frame was sort of um, a little bit too close to the background, but it's fine, it's done now. Um, yeah, and it looks so beautiful. Something else, another mistake I did make, I don't know if anyone's noticed, my flourish is actually upside down. It doesn't really matter. I don't believe there's actually a right and wrong way for this. Um, but according to the packaging, it should be the other way around, so never mind. Just here, I um, had a little bit of excess on my card base, so I'm just evening that up with my trimmer. My trimmer is so good, it's got such a sharp blade on, I can do my new little slithers like this. So next, I need to think about some sort of sentiment, and that's going to be using the cut and emboss folder. So these are brilliant. You've got an embossing folder and parts of the image will die cut. You can do a whole sheet at once or like I am here, I'm just putting a little bit of cardstock in to cut and emboss the part that I want, which is one of these fantastic labels, tags, um, tickets, whatever you want to call them. So I've got uh, produced with love 2024, which is perfect if you're giving a card. Now you need to run these through your die cutting and embossing machine by removing one of the plates, because if you don't remove one of the plates, you won't have enough room for the thickness of the machine. I tend to put a rubber mat in and take one of the clear plates out. So that's kind of the right thickness. Again, there is quite a lot of pressure here then, but it's perfect for getting the most beautiful emboss on those labels and also the cut as well. So now look at this, it's so beautiful. Uh, I tend to get a pokey tool to just, or bend the folder ever so slightly just to lift off the labels because they are embedded quite well in there. That's, I've managed to get the edge of that. It's such a deep emboss, it's absolutely stunning. So here I'm just working out where I'm going to position that. Uh, it's so beautiful. Now uh, I wanted to put gilding wax on this. Unfortunately, I didn't have gilding wax, but I did find I had a little bit of gold paint. Uh, mental note to order more gilding wax. I have no idea where that's gone. So I just put a little bit of gold paint onto a resistant surface, tapped off loads of excess on my finger, and then I uh, sort of just rubbed that over the surface and I was just getting the most beautiful result from it. And there we have it, how stunning is that? Now everything I've used is in the description below and do stay tuned to my channel because I've got lots more tutorials with this beautiful collection coming up.